Good morning. Good morning, my friends. Welcome to our daily devotions here with Pastor Sutton. Glad to have you here with us on this Tuesday morning, March 22nd. Gray and ugly and cold here in Wisconsin. So, Glenn, I'm jealous. I'll just say that. Um, but you know what? That's Wisconsin. It was beautiful uh, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, even yesterday wasn't too bad off and on, but today is just gray and... Well, yesterday was raining, I guess. Mm. So maybe yesterday wasn't quite so great. But... Uh, that's how it is, you know, you take a little rain. Rain falls on the good and evil like sun shines on the gloried, glorified and the wicked. That's just how it is for all God's people. So good morning. Glad you're here joining us for a little time in, in God's word. Brenda, good morning. 36 with a high of 45 in Brown City. Well, that's not too bad. Ashley, good morning to you. God's blessings. Kelly, good morning. Adam's having a rough day, huh? Well, some days are like that. I remember having days like that. I still have days like that. Kendra, good morning to you, dear. I don't think we've seen you in a while. Glad to, glad to have you with us. At least I don't remember saying hi to you recently, but I hope Jim's doing okay. Bonnie's there telling us it's 34 and dingy. We were having a discussion before things went live here about how to spell dinghy. She said, how do I spell dingy. or how do I spell dingy and not spell dinghy? Um, but din dinghy, the little the little boat that you put on a bigger boat has a has an H in it. So dingy looks like dinghy and there's just no way around it. Geraldine and Neil, good morning to you guys. Glad you're here with us. Jerry, good morning, Kathy. Hello. Verna, good morning. And there's the, there's the uh, um, uh, Haugen household. And Grant, Deb, glad to see you guys there. Uh, Glenn, good morning again. Picking on me by being in the Sunshine State. You're down by my buddy Mike Wettstein there. I don't know where you are exactly, Glenn. Mike's over by uh, Lakeland. Mushta, good morning. Or good evening, I should say. You say good morning to us, and we say good evening to you. Uh, and, uh, oh, you got a day off today, huh, Mike? No games today. All right, 82. Oh, man. That's awful. That's awful. Actually, I would love that. Bonnie would hate every minute of it. Yes. Plus, it's probably humid. Uh, Renee, good morning to you. Glad you're here. Cloudy and Marlette today. Yeah, cloudy and Marlette. Cloudy in Wisconsin. Cloudy, cloudy, cloudy. Jill and John, good morning. Bob and Jeannie, good morning to you guys. And there's Connie and Robin. Good morning. Oh, you're down in Panama City in the Panhandle. Okay, you're not that far south. All right. I think I knew that. I think Yeah, I think I knew that. I just wasn't thinking about it. So I don't have to think about everything all the time. And right now, frankly, with some of the medications I'm on for my arm and stuff, um, I don't think about a lot of things all the time. Sometimes I just close my eyes and go to sleep because I can't do anything else. Hey, let's uh, get into this. I do have Greek today down in Merrill, so I got to keep moving here. Uh, huh? I said hi to Jeannie and Renee. Are you not listening? She's not listening. No, I was focused on the camera. You know, big fancy shows, they have producers in the other room that talk to them to keep them in line. <laughs> I have a producer, too, uh, I guess. She doesn't do anything for production, but she does keep me in line. Okay, if you have a hymnal, Lutheran Service Book, uh, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families. That's where we begin in the remembrance of the gift we were given in baptism, the gift of the Holy Spirit and faith in Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise, with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Look at this. We got the, we got the, the hidden Jesus here sliding behind my, the, the, what do you call that? Where the buttons come together, and then, because it's a clerical, they're covered, the buttons are hidden. I don't know why that is. Bonnie says, so they're not distracting, I guess. Um, oh, yeah, but then the, ah, never mind. Uh, our psalm today, Psalm 2, verses 7 through 9. Just three verses. Psalm 2. I will tell of the decree the Lord said to me, You are my son today, I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage, and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron, and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Pardon my turning there. I, I got my little laptop here that I take down for Greek, and... Um, I haven't used it in a few weeks, and so it was in need of updates. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Now, it's, it's, it's uh, we're speaking of Jesus, of course, and his baptism in that psalm. Although, how could David know that? Um, well, the Holy Spirit guided him to do so. Um, uh, but... Not only that, the Lord says to uh, his people in their baptism, you are my son. Um, although it's not begotten, it's adopted. We're adopted into God's family through water and the word. Genesis. Genesis chapter 27. Now I jumped. We were at 22 yesterday. Um, and I said I was going to try and get us caught up with the day we're on. So we're all the way up to last Saturday at this point. Um, we jumped over Isaac, well, not Isaac, well, yes, Isaac, <laughs> Abraham's and, and Sarah sending their servant, uh, whose name escapes me at the moment, back to the land of Haran, back to her, her uncle Laban's house, her brother Laban's house, uh, to find a wife for Isaac from their people. Uh, from from uh, her people, uh, Rebecca, of course, is the one who meets um, meets the servant at the well and offers to water his his camels, even as she's waiting for her uh, family to come to water the the um, the sheep. This is uh, so back there. She's she she, she she then the dowry is exchanged. Uh, between Laban and the servant, and, and Rebecca comes willingly back uh, to Abraham and Sarah to marry Isaac, and she marries Isaac, and they uh, have two sons. Now, I, the sons are not, well, they must have been. They must have been in here. Um, yeah, they weren't. No, they, they skipped over the, they skip over the, the birth of, well, I'm kind of surprised by that. They skip over the birth of uh, Jacob and his, and his brother Esau. Interesting. They skip stuff too, huh? Well, I'm not backtracking, I'm just following. Bear with me a minute here. I gotta unlock this computer again. Um, uh, so we're we're here today where Isaac blesses Jacob, which is as Isaac is reaching the end of his life. I, uh, Jacob and Esau have have grown up, and you 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 may know or you may not know, but Jacob is not a mama's boy, um, but he's more academic. Uh, he's he's not a manly man. Um, I mean, he's not uh, he's not a floof, um, for lack of a better word. Um, Bonnie says I'm saying terrible things, but but 
Esau is an outdoorsman, right? He's a man mountain dean. He likes to hunt and fish and live outside. And so his skin is ruddy. Um, he's, a, uh, he's hairy um, and uh, red in color. His skin is red in color. Um, where Jacob is, is a little a little softer, a little softer. We'll say it that way. Um, so, uh, and, and remember, Esau was born first and Jacob was born second. Jacob was grabbing the heel of Esau as Esau was uh, being born, um, which is what Jacob means, grabs the heel. Um, and uh, uh, at some point in, in the narrative of the two boys, there's a time when Esau comes in the house and he's starving hungry and, and Jacob's making a red bean soup of some kind or stew. And uh, Esau says, well, I'll sell my birthright for the bowl of that stew. Uh, and Jacob takes him up on it. So Jacob actually bought Esau's birthright when they were younger. But this is, the, this is how the blessing goes. So um, when Isaac, again, Genesis 27, 1 through, through 29. I got to get this thing started so it's updating too. Uh, Genesis 27, 1 through 29. When Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Esau, his older son, to him and said to him, My son. He answered, Here I am. He said, Behold, I am old. I do not know the day of my death. Now then, take your weapons, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the field and hunt game for me, and prepare for me delicious food such as I love, and bring it to me, so that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. Now Rebekah was listening when Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went into the field to hunt for game and bring it, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau, bring me game and prepare for me delicious food that I may eat it and bless you before the Lord, before I die. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice as I command you. Go to the flock and bring me two good young goats so that I may prepare for, from them delicious food for your father such as he loves. And you shall bring it to your father to eat, so that he may bless you before he dies. But Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, my brother Esau is a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will feel me and shall seem to be mocking him, and bring a curse upon myself and not a blessing. His mother said to him, let your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go. Bring them to me. So he went and took them and brought them to his mother. And his mother prepared delicious food, such as his father loved. Then Rebekah took the best garments of Esau, her older son, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And the skins of the young goats she put on his hands and on the smooth part of his neck. And she put the delicious food and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob. So he went in to his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am. Who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done as you told me. Now sit up and eat of my game that your soul may bless me. But Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? He answered, Because the Lord your God granted me success. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come near that I may feel you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. And so Jacob went near to his father, who felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands the hands of Esau. And he did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau's hands. So he blessed him. He said, are you really my son Esau? He answered, 
I am. Then he said, Bring it near to me, that I may eat of my son's game and bless you. So he brought it near to him, and he ate, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Then his father said to him, Come near and kiss me, my son. So he came near and kissed him. And Isaac smelled of the smell of his garments, and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give you of the dew of heaven, and of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let peoples serve you, and nations bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may your mother's sons bow down to you. Cursed be everyone who curses you, and blessed be everyone who blesses you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's like soap operas, isn't it? That's the thing that, that um, always amazes me about... That doesn't amaze me. The human condition as it's played out in our scriptures, right? I mean, if, if you were going to write scriptures, uh, the holy words, uh, just to be holy and just to demonstrate the things that, that God wants and does, boy, wouldn't it be easy to just write the holy things and, and keep all of the human stuff out of it? And to make these patriarchs of the church, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Noah, Adam, make them perfect in every way? But no. No, our Heavenly Father, as His Spirit inspires the writing of this word, of these words. This is Moses. It had been oral tradition up until the time of Moses. And then Moses wrote these things down in the scrolls so that they would remain But he included all the humanity. He included everything that he did so that we would know that since the fall of Adam, man has been sinful at his heart. Right? That we are poor, miserable sinners. And, and it's included so that God can show us, so that we can learn. In fact, Paul says it's written down for our instruction, so that we can learn that even in the midst of all of our fallen nature, all of our acts of intrigue and deceit here, the Lord still cares for us, and he uses those things for his own purposes. It is great nations who rise from Jacob. Jacob will soon receive the name Israel. And uh, he will travel back to the land of his mother's family. And there he will get a wife uh, and a second wife. And their uh, maid servants, their, their women in waiting, will become his wives also. And from them will come 12, the 12 tribes of Israel. And intrigue and deceit will occur there too, just as it does in our day. God uses those things uh, to his own purposes. Even our suffering in this world. We suffer many, many things in this world. I, you know, from from simply the, the, the act of aging and death, sickness, um, to struggles in the workplace, difficulties in our home life. All of these things. Yeah. But in them, in them, for the faithful, for those who place their trust in God, in them, he is working all things for the good of them who have faith in him. We can't know. We don't get the big picture, right? We can't see Alpha and Omega beginning and end. But he not only can, but does. He already knows what the outcome is. Uh, knowing is not creating. Right. Um, again, his foreknowledge is not um, foreknowledge is not does not create the outcome, but rather uh, foreknowledge is knowing what the outcome will be. He's given his grace through the blood of Christ for everyone. Not everyone believes, 
nor does he require it of anyone to believe. But for those who do believe in the blood shed by Christ for the forgiveness of their sins, they have that. They have it. And they are called sons of God by baptism and by faith. And their sins are forgiven. Your sins in Christ by his blood shed upon the cross, by faith and trust in him that comes through the gift of the Spirit in your baptism, presented to you again and again in His Holy Word, keeps you and sustains you in the promised inheritance of life everlasting in Christ Jesus. Something you possess now and yet is being kept for you in heaven. Amazing that even in the midst of the foibles and the difficulties and the struggles and the toils, persecution and the prosecution of people. God continues to love us all through his son, Christ Jesus, who died and rose from the dead for you. Amen. Let's leave it at that today. Our prayer of the day. Almighty God, your son willingly endured the agony and shame of the cross for our redemption. Grant us courage to take up our cross daily and follow him wherever he leads through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. What? Oh, it's indexing. You download new books, you've got to re-index the ones that are there. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you and I, my friends, in Christ Jesus, are bold to pray as he taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And prayers for ourselves and others on this Tuesday morning. With grateful heart I rise to praise you, O Lord my God, for you have refreshed me with a restful sleep, and given me your grace to see the dawn of a new day. You have also made this day. It is yours. Grant that every word I utter and every act I perform will reveal your presence in my life. Make me thoughtful and considerate at work and keep me patient with those who irritate me. Remove all malice and resentment from my heart and enable me to bear with serenity the unpleasant situations that I cannot change. Protect me from temptation and the allurements of sin, from doubt and worry, from lovelessness and strife. Throughout this day, enrich my life with your benedictions. Protect me from the acts, from accident and harm, and bring me safely home at the end of the day. For the sake of my Lord, who is my Savior, even Jesus Christ. Amen. Boy, that's a good prayer. Keep me patient, even with those who irritate me. I think we all need that once in a while. We pray also for those who suffer in body, mind, or soul, Lord, asking you to grant them comfort and assurance, especially those who have asked for our prayers. Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Rose, Lois, and all those who we now name in our hearts and minds. Grant them, Lord, strength where it is needed, comfort, where it is lacking, 
and always the assurance of your eternal presence with them through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, that brings our devotions for today to a close. God's blessings upon you. I'm going to rush down to Merrill and speak Greek, working on uh, this Sunday's readings. So God's peace be with you, and we will see you here tomorrow morning again for our daily devotion. God's peace.